black cinema, powerful, moving, inspiring. Needed a pinta in the, in the, in the whatchamacallit? We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. Great performances done by talented people. Virgil, that's a funny name for a nigga boy that comes from Philadelphia. What do they call you up there? They call me Mr. Tibbs. People doing amazing things. People. While telling amazing stories. But they gotta stick stories. a dynamite up your ass and the fuse is burning. You understand me? Now I want you out. Oh, you. So that puts your landing zone at 5.0667 degrees north. Seven, telling seven stories of people three, hidden by history and forgotten west, by time. Which is here. Give or take 20 square miles. But where did it all begin? Well. It began with this man, Oscar Michel. Not much is known about his early life other than he was born in Metropolis, Illinois on January 2nd, 1884. He moved to Chicago at the age of 17 and worked as a Pullman porter for a while. He eventually left Chicago and headed west to South Dakota and became a homesteader and married for the first time. While homesteading, he began to write stories, and it was this experience that became the basis for his first novel, The Conquest, the story of a Negro pioneer. After facing hardships from a drought and losing his land and splitting from his wife, he moved to Iowa. It was there he established his own book publishing company. During this time, he released two more novels, The Forged Note and The Homesteader, the latter being a sequel to The Conquest. Soon after the Homesteaders' release, he was approached by a company that wanted to make a movie out of it. But the deal fell through when his demands couldn't be met. He then converted his publishing company to the Michelle Film and Book Company. He then made the first feature-length film by an African-American, The Homesteader, which was released in February 1919. Michelle, like many black directors at the time, their films were considered race films. Films made by a black director featuring an all-black cast for an all-black audience during a time when Hollywood was deeply segregated. Michaud's most notable film was Within Our Gates, often considered his response to D.W. Griffith's Birth of a Nation. While Griffith's film depicts blacks as lazy, drunk procrastinators ruining a town on one hand and praising the Ku Klux Klan on another as the saviors, Michelle's film paints a different picture of a biracial teacher trying to raise funds for a school for sharecroppers' children. While showing the intense themes of lynchings of innocence, and the near rape of the main character. Michaud tried to tell stories about the black condition as he saw it, while making many more films across many genres, working with many different actors such as his second wife Alice B. Russell and Paul Robeson. He did eventually venture into sound films with 1931's The Exile, released two years after King Vidor's Hallelujah, which was one of the first all-black films by a major studio with the white director. It was also Vidor's first sound film. Hallelujah, like a lot of films back then that featured black cast with white directors, suffered in retrospect telling stereotypical stories of black life through the lens of criminality and sexual deviance, which allowed for them to be made. Michelle was not without his own controversies. One of the most notable being the depiction of lighter skinned people as more affluent and educated, and darker skinned people as poor and uneducated. Despite this, he continued working through the Great Depression well into the late 1940s, with 1948's Betrayal being his last film. 
Michelle died in 1951 in Charlotte, North Carolina at the age of 67. And in 1986, he received a posthumous award from the Directors Guild of America. And in 1987, he received his star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And while most of his films are lost, his contribution to film is not. Thank you.